Hi, I'm Paul. I'm just going to show you how we, um, we turn a normal rock hard bone into one of our bendy bones. It's very simple. It's a process that leaves all of the protein intact and just takes out one component. And that component is the mineral. And so we take that mineral out by placing the bones into a very simple acid, formic acid, the acid that ants use. It's not very strong, it's not very difficult. I used to do it as a kid with hen's egg with um, vinegar. So you can use very gentle acids. It doesn't take very long. It's this simple. There you go. Very scientific. Do you like it? So those bones sit in that acid and trundle around quite slowly. It takes a day or two. And all that happens is the bone, the mineral component of the bone dissolves, leaves the protein, and you get a bendy bone like that. The other bones that we'll be showing you that we have are the ones that have the, pr the mineral left in and the protein taken out. And they're using simple bleach, pool bleach. Very simple things, you can do it at home. And those ones we'll show you, as you can see, will snap and shatter into tiny little bits. This bone is brittle because it has far too much mineral. And this is a regular bone where the balance is appropriate and the strength is far greater. This bone is far too bendy because it does not have enough mineral. Okay, so what does this tell us about the bones? We all know bone as a rock hard, very inflexible substance. However, a gentle change in the amount of mineral you get or a lack of mineral and clearly that function fails and fails terribly. And so we know that there are scenarios where bones get very, very brittle particularly um, in young adults or even children. Um, osteogenesis imperfecta is a perfect example of just this. Too much mineral and very, very brittle bones. We also know as we age, we lose bone. And a, s a very common subset of people lose far too much bone. And we all know the problems of uh, postmenopausal osteoporosis and osteoporosis in men, where um, our elderly population suffers a marked increase in the number of fractures and particularly debilitating fractures as they age. So what we want to be able to do is to make sure that that balance between too much mineral and not enough mineral is maintained. What we're also discovering at the Garvin is that the bone is interacting with other systems in our body, in particular those that control not only how much um, adipose tissue, how much obesity we do or do not have, but also um, our diabetes. And my work in particular has been looking at factors that are that come out of your bone and that regulate not only your metabolic health but also your glycemic health. And that is a, an enormous step forward not only in potential treatments for obesity and diabetes but also in understanding what treatments we have for bone diseases may be affecting um, other side effects throughout our body.